InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Wednesday, July 17th, 2013. Now, tonight we have a special treat for our Prison Planet subscribers. We're going to have the world premiere of State of Mind. Stick around. It's going to be a roundtable discussion with the filmmakers and Alex Jones as we air that after the news. But first, the news. Now, if you remember when Snowden leaked the information about the PRISM program and how our information was being collected by Microsoft and a lot of other companies, the companies that were named, the companies involved, issued carefully worded denials saying they had absolutely nothing to do with it as uh, it was depicted in the leaked top secret slides. Yet one of these companies, Yahoo, is fighting to have their name cleared and fighting to get legal due process back in this country. The US government is now going to declassify Yahoo legal documents from FISA, the secret court opinion. Now, if you remember last uh, Friday, I believe, we reported that Yahoo was suing for this information. Now they have won. This from the article from Engadget, it says Yahoo had claimed that it fought against PRISM since 2008. It's now about to land previously secret court documents to prove it. A foreign intelligence surveillance court, that would be FISA, has ruled that the U.S. Department of Justice must declassify the firm's legal briefs and the court's decision on the search giant's attempts to resist the government's request for user data. As the Daily Dot notes, this is the only the second known civilian victory in a FISA Intelligence Surveillance Act, a FISA courtroom, and it follows a win by the EFF just a few days ago. So keep that in perspective. This is only two times that they've had their rulings challenged. This is not, this is not a legitimate court. This is not a court that conforms to any sort of traditional court. It's not a, for, a court that conforms to any kind of constitutional definition of a court. There is no jury, there is no opposition, merely a, an appointed judge. There's only 11 of these judges that are appointed. They're appointed by the Supreme Court Chief Justice. Now when John Roberts came in, he knew nothing about the appointments of these judges. He knew, didn't know anything about the FISA court, according to him. When he briefed the Senate back in June, he told them basically how this worked and how surprised he was to find out that there was something like this because it's not a real court. It's not anything that's in the Constitution. And yet, John Roberts went ahead and appointed judges. He didn't say anything about it. He didn't blow the whistle on it. It took someone like Snowden to get people aware of this. Now this has been around for a very long time. It's been around for 33 years. And listen to this statistic. Last year alone, the FISA court heard nearly 1,800 such applications from the U.S. government. Not a single request for surveillance was denied. In its entire 33-year history, the FISA court has rejected only 11 out of 34,000 requests for information. This is basically a secret rubber stamp court. It gives the government anything that they want and they presume then that they have legal coverage to do whatever they want because they've got this secret court that nobody knows about. We're not even entitled as the public to see these court opinions even though they maintain that they are modifying our Constitution with these secret decisions. Nothing of the sort is really being had. They're basically playing a mind game with themselves because this is unlawful, it's unconstitutional and it's secretive. And that brings us to our quote of the day from James Madison. He says, do not separate text from historical background. If you do, you will have perverted and subverted the Constitution, which can only end in a distorted, bastardized form of illegitimate, illegitimate government. Boy, I tell you what, you could not have a better description of the federal government today than what James Madison foresaw a distorted, bastardized form of illegitimate government. And FISA is the court system of that illegitimate government. It flies in the face of tradition as well as law. As he was pointing out, you cannot separate the text of the Constitution from a historical background. The historical background for the Fourth Amendment, for the Fifth Amendment, for basically our Bill of Rights as well as our judicial system were things like the Star Chamber Court that met in England where there were these secret hearings that were met, where you were not allowed to even know in many cases that you were being investigated, where you were called in and maybe compelled to testify against yourself, where you could not see the decisions, you merely suffered the effects of that court. Now we're back to that again, because we have forgotten historical context, we've allowed people to ignore the actual text of the Constitution. 
But not all of our leaders are that way. We do have a few people in the Republican Party, primarily <clears throat> in the Democrat Party. We have Senator Ron Wyden. There's a few libertarian senators, a few libertarian congressmen, pretty much in the GOP, although they are very much in the minority. We have senators like Lindsey Graham, who is trying to, uh, wants to prosecute Snowden on espionage. He just came out and said that he wants to boycott the Olympics being held in Russia if they even think about giving him asylum there. This person, Lindsey Graham, is up for re-election. We need to make sure that we don't return statists like him to office. Now, in an email between uh, Snowden and, uh, actually it was initiated by a GOP senator, former senator, Gordon Humphrey from New Hampshire, and he sent an email to Edward Snowden in The Guardian, and listen to what he said. Mr. Snowden, provided you have not leaked information that would put in harm's way any intelligence agent, I believe you have done the right thing in exposing what I regard as massive violation of the United States Constitution. Now, Greenwald wrote back to him to verify that this was, in fact, coming from uh, the, the senator. And he replied back and said, yes, it was I who sent this. And he said, I wanted to thank him for exposing astonishing violations of the U.S. Constitution and encouraging him to persevere in the search for asylum. To my knowledge, Mr. Snowden has disclosed only the existence of a program and not details that would place any person in harm's way. <clears throat> I regard him as a courageous whistleblower. And he said, I object to the monumentally disproportionate campaign being waged by the U.S. government against Edward Snowden while no effort is being made to identify, remove from office, and bring to justice those officials who have abused power seriously and repeatedly violating the Constitution of the United States and the rights of millions of unsuspecting citizens. Well, I think Gordon Humphrey needs to get back in the political arena. I know he's, uh, he's very... Uh, he's retired at this point. Maybe he's not interested in getting back into politics, but we need statesmen like that who will point out that it is not Snowden that we should be going after, but the criminals who violated their oath of office, who violated the Constitution. There's no talk about that from the Justice Department, from the Obama administration, or from Republicans like Lindsey Graham and John McCain. Now you can watch the InfoWars Nightly News streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.